Do you understand that it's no use having a faith that wavers? And in that time, my faith must not waver. And it was also the same when I was in the prison because, you know, uh, when I was in the prison and uh, after six months when I'd gone for the trial and been found guilty, of course, thank God I was found guilty. <laughs> I would have been ashamed if I'd not done anything under communism that they could find me guilty of, but preaching the gospel and so on. Uh, yeah. But the thing was this, that three days later, God gave me a vision and a dream which showed me the exact day that I would come out of the prison for Easter. The exact day. But the fact is this, that I had to hold on to that face. And although eventually I got it confirmed from the scripture, in the last months before my release, the pressure had built up. You've got to be in a prison to understand, a communist prison. The pressure had built up so strongly that I failed. I had, in effect, a heart attack. It was... A valve, heart valve that was murmuring or whatever. And when I realized that what was happening, that the stress of the prison and the stress of waiting for the, yeah, waiting for the deliverance brought me to an extent where I had, in effect, what was a mini heart attack. And I had to, I had to go to the doctor, and their doctors couldn't do anything. Fortunately, in prison, me was a was a German doctor was in in prison with me, and he went with me because he spoke a bit of the language, and uh, he actually saw the ECG and told me what it was. And when I went back to, to, to my workbench, there I was in a labour camp. When I went back to the to the to the workbench where I was working forced labor, I cried out to God. I absolutely wept before God. I said, oh God, look, I failed. I, I've let go. My faith has failed. And as a result, I'm not going to get out. And look, I was see. I didn't, I, I, it wasn't the scripture I was reading. I knew in my spirit that if I failed and my faith wavered, I wouldn't get out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what, that's what the Bible is saying. And the Lord reassured me because he is very human. And I got the peace that, yes, I had confessed and I had wept before God over my failure. You know the answer. And, 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 and God is, is wonderful because I was released on the exact day that God had, the exact day. And so God doesn't fail. But if we don't have that faith, the very work that we do is in vain. Oh, well, let me go on. Uh, let me go on in this. Uh, because in verse uh, 21, wasn't Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered his son Isaac on the altar? Works. Now, come on, we're dealing with a different subject here. His faith was justified by the fact that although God had promised that through his son, he would make Abraham the father of a great nation. And here he was, one and only one son, putting him on the altar, prepared to kill him in faith that God would still do what he said. And verse 23, it says, the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So Abraham was saved, not because Christ had died, but saved because what he did was in anticipation of the death of Christ. But he was saved by that act of faith in believing God to the extreme. And somehow we've got to understand this challenge in the day that we live now, whether it's through this COVID, whether it's through the persecution that's coming, through whatever is happening in your life, whether for the Jews it was through the Holocaust, for Russians it was through the, the, the prison camps, and, and so on, through it all. We have to realize that holding on to God by faith 
is the way into the kingdom.